Hey, Edgers. I am Joe Hernandez, your 2020 program chair, and we are here with our first WOW, which is Words of Wisdom. Um, this is usually a blog, but we decided during these times we would take it virtual for you guys and really get to see the faces and the interaction and, and live answers for these questions. So today we are very lucky and I'm very thankful to have Jen Oblog here to answer some questions for us. Um, Jen, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to start? Thanks, Joe. I'm happy to be the guinea pig for um, a virtual wow. <laughs> um, my name is Jennifer Avalon. Um, I work for Kaiser Permanente. I'm the Committee and Government Relations Manager here um, in Sacramento. Um, let's see, I'm native Sacramento. I have a family here. Um, I have my mom and dad still lives in town. Um, I have a husband, Antonio, and uh, two wonderful, crazy, enthusiastic boys, um, Santiago and Sebastian. Santiago is going to be 10 in a few weeks, um, which is a little crazy because then I'm going to have a kid in double digits. And then Sebastian, um, he'll be turning seven um, in a couple months. And um, been involved in EDGE. For a while, was on the leadership council for a couple of years under Mike Marion and Rachel Vilmer, and was able to help create a mentorship program. Have worked with Joe for a number of years, chair of the sponsorship committee, um, and involved with um, Emerge and some of the other programs. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Jen, and, and thank you for all your involvement in not even just in EDGE and the chamber and the community. I know that you do a lot of other things too. So, you know, really thank you for your commitment to our community and everything specifically you've done for EDGE in the past as well. So next question is, what are the th three things that you wish you had known before embarking on your career? So I took some notes here. So if you see me looking at my notes so I can remember um, what I'm talking about. <laughs> but um, you know, when one of the one of the things that you made me think of when you said look back about twenty five when we were twenty five or thirty five, I realized um, you know I wasn't even in healthcare at the time. Um, I was working for the city of Sacramento and running the California um, Senior Game Sacramento Sports Classic, which is like uh, an Olympics for adults to ages fifty five and older. And it was truly, truly inspiring. Um, and then fast forward a couple of years later, um, I am uh, dipping my toes in healthcare, running an organization or managing it um, that um, provided health insurance for kids. Um, and we also did enrollment and outreach and education to get families onto health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, a part of that though was also to create this uh, health insurance product called Healthy Kids. Um, so it was like a pseudo nonprofit um, it was my first time um, as an executive director for two nonprofits because we had health insurance side and also children's health initiative side. Um, and it was like drinking from a fire hose <laughs> and learning. Um, and I felt, I remember like self care was really important um, that um, in order to do my best, I had to make sure that I, I took care of myself. Um, and my family at the time, so that is key. Um, and then I've learned that it was okay not to have all the answers all at once. Because you feel, and I always felt the need, like when someone asked me a question that I had to have the answer right away. Um, and sometimes that, that wasn't good because maybe it wasn't the right answer, <laughs> but I felt like I had to respond. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's something that I wish I, I, I knew and um, would do better at. The other thing was just pacing myself. Um, as cliche as it sounds, life is a journey. You don't have to do everything at once. Um, it's how you get there. Um, it's not getting there. I really like um, now more than ever the self-care. Self-care. Yeah. That's what we have to be remembering right now. Uh, yeah. So then did you have a mentor or did you have multiple mentors? What were some of the key lessons or um, advice that you got from these mentors? Yeah, I had several mentors um, 
multiple mentors and they filled my cup in different ways. Um, I had mentors that pushed me and, and still have mentors to this day that just really helped me realize my full potential and gave me the confidence that I needed to move forward. But they really taught me and this person said this to me and it just helped me quite a bit is that you have to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you because when you do that, that just enables you to grow as a person. And um, leaders often do that because they know that they can't do it alone. Um, and then don't be afraid to lean on others. I think that that's huge. Sometimes like you feel you're uh, sometimes all alone and um, you can't ask for help, but you can. Um, and then another key thing that they taught me was really invest in others and empower others to, uh, then reach their full potential. Mm -hmm. I really like that. And I mean, quick shout out to my 2020 LC. I definitely chose people who had <laughs> better <laughs> skills than I did, who were, I think, smarter than me in certain ways that have really filled our cup, filled Edge's cup, and, and really taught me lessons too. So that is a really good one too that I can definitely jump on board with. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> how do you handle work-life balance? Post and pre-COVID, because obviously those are two different answers. Post and pre-COVID. <laughs> it's a little bit of the same. It's just more intense on the other side. Um, you know, I think that will always be a work in progress for me. It, I feel like it evolves as you get older and your priorities change, of course. Um, it was, of course, different on how I approached work-life balance, um, I would say, pre-kids. Uh, then, you know, you don't have anybody that you're responsible for. So, um, to me, it's making choices and sometimes sacrifices in the moment. Um, and then, um, you know, what, what another great mentor also told me that, um, it's learning how, how I spend my time. Um, and when I do being fully present. So it may be an instance where I could only, um, you know, um, at the end of the day, read a book to my kids, and it's maybe an hour or so, but I'm going to be fully present in that hour um, versus being able to spend the whole day with them. So, um, and again, it goes back to self-care. Um, that's a balance for me, and that, that will always be a challenge of making sure that I put myself first in some instances, because um, you have to take care of yourself to be um, the best in order for you to take care of others. So. Yeah, being fully fully present is, is something I struggle with still. So that's a good one for sure. Yeah, so. it's hard. We get distracted a lot. There's just so much <laughs> noise. From yeah. Social media to, you know, phones to binging on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Emails, Netflix, now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so how important is it to be involved in organizations outside of work? Be these community, these organizations could be community-based organizations as well. You know, I know we kind of hit on the fact that you're involved in a lot of things in our community. Like, how important is it for us to be involved in our communities? I I think it's very important, and you do it um, within what you want to do and what your capacity is. Um, whether it be community organizations. Um, helping around either domestic violence or homelessness or mental health. I mean, there's so many initiatives and issues that you could um, tag on to. So it's whatever I think your passion is um, that, that you can contribute to. Um, I, I truly feel like you, you get what you give to folks. Um, and the more that you do that, it's just, it's also part of self-care too, whether it be, in sports or extracurricular or um, you know anything that you want to get involved with I think that just helps people as a whole understand and, and connect with folks and connect with the community better true so a little bit of more fun question what do you love about Sacramento well I love everything about Sacramento I'm a little biased because I'm I was born and raised in Sacramento <laughs> but um, it's from the people, um, it's the diversity, it's the culture of our business corridors and our neighborhoods. 
Um, it's so different in so many areas. Um, it's the seasons of Sacramento, even though it can get extremely hot and uncomfortable, but we have our seasons, um, which, which I love. Um, I love that my family's still here. Well, most of my family's still here. Yeah, oh, and I'm a foodie and I love the food in Sacramento. I think that gets overlooked from other areas. They kind of say, oh, we're going to Sacramento, what's there? But there's just so many great, great choices and, and ethnic food to try, so. It's what's they, and once they get here, they know, they realize they're like, oh, this is what people are talking about. And right now it's important to still support local. Yes. Orders home. Um, a lot of restaurants, small businesses are still counting on us to, to support them and show that Sacramento love. So that's important too right now. Yes, absolutely. Um, what has been the most challenging part of this time? How have you or are you overcoming it? I think for me, the most challenging part has been the uncertainty um, of it all. It's the, the unknown. Usually, you're able to look at a year and, and plan in advance of, of vacations or certain milestones, birthdays, celebrations. And it's how you celebrate those are, are a little bit unknown, like vacations to, to see family. Um, and I think that's the hardest part for me. Um, but, you know, and, and I think it's the craziness, I think with kids too, with what's happening in the school district um, and, and just responding to what their needs are and seeing, making sure that we're, I'm checking in with not just them, but friends and family um, and seeing how, you know, emotionally, how we can get through this together. And well, Quick, of course, shout out to our essential workers over at Kaiser, all you guys who are in the office, even you, I think you're still in an office, right? You're still at work. So <laughs> I'm still in mean, the office. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, being out there, um, doing what you guys do, um, shout out to that. Of course, want to take a second for that. All those essential workers that are out there, not just Kaiser, but Kaiser specifically since we got you on the line right now. <laughs> but I did want to ask, and I don't know how much you'll be able to answer, um, what is Kaiser doing during this time to pivot? Yeah, no, you know, like you said, I, you know, truly give a shout out to our frontline healthcare workers, um, even the support staff from administration, from our environmental services to facility folks. I mean, everybody's jumping in, um, doing the work and preparing for anything that may come, like we call it surge planning. Um, so just being prepared has been a tremendous amount of work and the leadership from local um, to our regional offices um, have, been, have been tremendous and, support, and the support that they've been giving. We've also been focusing internally just on making sure our employees and physicians are taken care of um, and providing some, some wellness to them and, and respite. So it's a lot of planning is taking place right now. I can only imagine, especially with such a large system. So what specific advice do you have for YPs during this time? And well, not just for YPs, and it just goes really go back to self-care um, and also checking in with family and friends. I think sometimes um, we, we are out of touch with folks or we feel like, um, you know, some of our stronger friends are okay, but in actuality, they may, may not be. Um, so I think that's important. And, you know, like you see on social media and Facebook is um, now that we're not as slammed for time to try to do things that we've been waiting to do. So you see folks like baking and cooking and arts and crafts, crocheting, whatever that may be to try something new at this time. So actually just perfect segue into this. So we've got all this time, like we just talked about. Um, what are some suggestions for books, articles, podcasts, websites, et cetera, that you would, you would yeah. drop there for people looking to, you know, really um, pad their skills? So the, the last book that I read, and, it, and it's funny because um, I feel like I don't read as much as I need to with this book. But the last book I read was Becoming by Michelle Obama. 
and I was really looking forward to seeing her live um, beginning of April. So I'd highly recommend her book if you want to feel um, uplifted, especially during these times. Um, the other thing is um, I listen to a lot of uh, NPR Tiny Desk concerts. Um, I love music, so that is just something that uh, I love to do. I've got a lot of favorites um, on that end. Um, and then one other thing that I saw, and actually it was posted on social media um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, another friend posted it, was um, an article by the um, Harvard Business Review on the discomfort you're feeling is grief. And what's interesting is that's also an article that's being talked about here among our leadership um, as well, but it's, it's a nice article and it kind of validates the feelings that I was feeling around. You just have this, I think just like this dull sense of anxiety or anxiousness. It's not something that is, um, you know, like a strong feeling and it, and it just comes out of nowhere. It's just, this prolonging sense during this time. And this article just like um, really nailed it for me on, on how I was feeling. So would highly recommend that. Again, it's called That Discomfort You're Feeling is Grief um, by the Harvard Business Review. Awesome. And then, wait, so you said, what's the pod, can you explain the podcast or NPR you said? Tiny you? Desk Concerts? Yeah. Have, what, you, have you heard of that before, Joe? No, what is that? Yeah, what is that? So it's artists, um, and it could be famous artists or up and coming folks that um, there's um, a little desk over at NPR and they, they convert that into a space where they're actually doing um, a stripped down performance of some of their songs. So you've got like folks anywhere from like Adele, John Legend, even Taylor Swift did it. And then you've got some more unknown folks that have gone through it, but um, if you're into music, I would highly, highly recommend it because um, it's just kind of an up close and personal feel uh, that you get from it. It's kind of like a private concert that you can listen to or see. Cool. Yeah. I, I did not know. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah, send it to me. Um, so if you, have, if you want to share your social media or an email address, if people have questions that they would want to, if you're comfortable, just, you know, where could people find you if they wanted to reach out, if they had further questions for you? People can find me on Facebook mostly for social media. Um, so it'd just be my name. Um, and then um, I am on Instagram, um, recently on Instagram. This is how much I'm in social media. Um, so my Instagram is J-I-K-A-33. Um, so they can find me on Instagram. Uh, just know I don't post as much on there, but you can also find me via email uh, at jennifer.k.ablog, A, B as in boy, L-O-G, at kp.org. Awesome, well, thanks for sharing that. And actually, thank you for your time. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Did you have any uh, last um, words of advice or statements you'd like to make? Um, well, I just wanna say, if you do reach out to me, I would love any suggestions on podcasts, books, websites, articles, all that good stuff that you asked me about, Joe. So would, would love any recommendations for that. Um, and then I just wanted to thank, you know, YPs that have made Sacramento region their home, either if they're from here or they're new to here. Appreciate that. Please support the community, get involved, um, share your innovations and your creativity and join Metro Edge. <laughs> so thank you for all our Edge members who um, logged on to this and also any community members who are watching as well. Um, this year's hashtag is Edge for All. We're really about engaging with all of our community, um, whether you're members or not and whether you're familiar with Edge. Definitely we're here about really elevating the young professional, helping with professional development and giving back to our community. So we're a great organization to, to engage with. Um, also be on the lookout for uh, more virtual content. We do have a forum coming up in the next week or so. Um, that's gonna be on financial literacy 
And we had one just a couple weeks ago that was on essentialism during this time, talking about how important it is to get back down to what's important in your roots. So um, just keep engaged with us. We'll have content out there for you guys during this time. And um, until next time, stay safe and stay well.